Good morning po sa inyong lahat! Kamusta naman po ang lahat? Good morning! Presence of the Lord is overwhelming po, ano? Yan, yaking preacher. <laughs> Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Sister Jean Ernestina Yao Makaraeg. Ayan, ako po ay uh, sinners healed by grace. And only by His grace standing here in front of you. And I have been tasked to deliver God's message for us today. It might be general, but the word of the Lord does not go to and fro in vain. All right, so let's have expectant hearts, brothers and sisters. Let's open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and expect from the Lord a personal message from Him. Na hindi po masasayang yung pagpunta po natin ngayong araw. All right, um, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, truly we want to praise and glorify your name, Panginoon. Nothing in this world could satisfy, Lord God, but only you. Totoo po yan, Panginoon. And we pray, Lord God, that um, your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will just fill our hearts, Lord God, ngayong oras na ito, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit will roam around, Lord God. Um, seek our hearts, Lord God. Search our hearts. Tell us, Lord God, of any offensive ways in us, Lord God, so that we could ask forgiveness for them. We pray for forgiveness, Lord God, sa lahat ng aming mga kasalanan, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat for your faithfulness to forgive us our sins through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Truly, we have nothing to boast in front of you, Panginoon. And we thank you because even though we are this way, you love us the same. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. I pray, Lord God, for your anointing. Hide me behind your cross. Only you, Lord God, be increased, Lord God, and everybody else decrease, Panginoon. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. So, I could see a few faces na bago sa ating church. Alright? And we want to welcome you with warmth. Um, welcome to ACCI family. Um, ito po ay hindi po kami isang organized religion, um, but we are a family of God. We believe in Jesus Christ, and because of that, we are one family. Okay? So, we want to welcome you in the second part of a series na napaka-sentimental. It's entitled, At the Feet of Jesus. Why, why did I describe it as this sentimental? Because when you are this close to God, when you are this intimate with God, talagang you will break down in front of Him. When you finally realize that God is not just a symbol, when you finally realize that God is not some religion, but He is a person wanting to pursue your love, Wanting to give you chance over and over again just to have you reconciled back to Him. Ang sarap umupo sa paanan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen? The series is entitled, At the Feet of Jesus. No one who sits at the feet of Jesus will ever be the same again. Sino po dito ang magte-testify? Amen. Our series anchor verse comes from Book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 41 to 42. It's the time when Jesus Christ entered a home of brothers Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Martha was very busy preparing for the food, preparing everything. And most of most likely we can relate to that. If we have somebody special coming to our house, paghahandaan natin yan. But you will be surprised. Mary, who had a heart after Jesus' own heart, was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Alam niyo po kung sino ang kinomend ni Jesus Christ? Sabi niya kay Martha, 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 the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things 
are, in, are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. For the past weeks, pinag-iisipan ko at the feet of Jesus. Ano ang pakiramdam, ano ang experience kapag nandoon ka sa paana ng Panginoong Jesus? Inimagine ko yung dinaranas ni Mary of Bethany. And I tried looking into the Bible, ano pa ba yung mga pagkakataon where real-life people were at the feet of Jesus. I will share with you one passage. This is not um, our scripture reading yet, but I want to mention it because nakakarelate ako sa kanya and sana makarelate din kayo sa kanya. This is a story of a sinful woman who brought an alabaster jar of an expensive perfume went to a house of a Pharisee named Simon. Meron pong pariseyo, isang priest, religious leader, nag-invite kay Jesus Christ sa kanyang bahay. Inibitahan si Jesus, nung malaman nung babaeng ito, napapunta si Jesus Christ sa bahay ni Simon the Pharisee, nagmadali yung babae. This woman is an immoral woman, sinful, dirty, and kapag kakilala kang immoral woman sa society nila, you will be outcasted. Nobody will accept you as you are. When this woman saw Jesus Christ, he cried, he, he wept at the feet of Jesus, wiped the tears with her hair, and poured perfume, a very rare expensive perfume on his feet. When Simon the Pharisee, who is the one who invited Jesus Christ to the house, who is the host, didn't even wash Jesus' feet, even forgotten to put olive oil as an anointing to this visitor. But this, another visitor, did all this thing even more. You know what Simon the Pharisee thought? If this man truly is a prophet, he would know that this woman is sinful. He was not speaking it out. He was just thinking it out. But Jesus Christ read his thoughts. And asked Simon the Pharisee, Simon, if I loan one person 50 cents and I loan somebody, say, let's say, 1,000 uh, denarii, hindi ko po alam yung uh, denomination, nakalimutan ko po yung denomination, but let's just say 50 and 1,000. And I tell them both, both of your debts are forgiven, slashed off. Who will be more thankful? The one who, was, uh, who, who had a bigger debt. Amen? Verse 47 says, I tell you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little, shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. So brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this even before I start with the preaching. If you have experienced forgiveness from God, if you know that you have nothing to boast before God, then you will be able to give much love. But if you feel like you are a good person and there's nothing in you to be forgiven of, then might be you will not be able to give that much love to God. Okay? And much the same, I am not expecting every one of you to not sleep. I'm not expecting all of you to listen attentively. Why? Because I know that the Lord's words have authority. And it's up to your expectant heart what you will receive and not based on what I will say. So I pray, brothers and sisters, that we will all be expectant, be humble before God, and ask for His presence, ask for His wisdom, and ask for His voice, a personal voice talking to us, changing our hearts, touching our lives. Amen? At the feet of Jesus, there is forgiveness. Amen? There is peace. There is love. 
At the feet of Jesus, there is acceptance. There is guidance. There is life. Amen? At the feet of Jesus, we get to experience God's presence. At the feet of Jesus, we get to be personal with Him. San po kayo nakakita? Personal na God. He is not some master with white beard, white long beard, standing, sitting there, looking at us, waiting for us to make mistakes, ma waiting for us to be punished. No. He loves us. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Now we start with our preaching, which is entitled, Jesus, how do I love you? How do I love thee? Paano kita mamahalin? Again, when I was thinking about this title, how can I love J Jesus? And why do I have to love Jesus? Anong nabigay sa akin ni Jesus para mahalin ko siya? I mean, if you come to think of it, if I am some successful person, satisfied with life, what good will it bring me to love Jesus, di ba? So that's my first question. But ultimately, how do I love Jesus? Let's take this anchor verse. You might think, hindi masyadong related, but let's see. Let's all read together if you can read from there. It's coming from Matthew 13, verses 14 to 15. Let's read it all together. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, When you hear what I say, you will not understand when you see what I do. You will not comprehend, for the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. So, mapapatanong ka, anong relate niyan sa ating title? How do I love Jesus? Ano ang relation ng hardened hearts sa pagmamahal ko sa Panginoon? Why do we have to love Jesus? We love because He first loved us. Brothers and sisters, we are unable to love Jesus unless He loves us first. No amount of effort, no amount of no amount of religiosity will suffice to love God. Hindi po enough yung mga efforts na yon. But when when the time comes when we experience God's love ourselves, it's automatic. Our response is gratitude, just like that sinful woman. We have to love Jesus because it is God's. Greatest commandment. The first commandment is this. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Amen? So, now you know that we have to love Jesus. We want to know how. How can we really, really love Jesus? Alam niyo po kasi, um, meron po tayong tinatawag na love languages. Sa mag-asawa, meron pong love language, for example, na si husband, ang love language niya ay service. Pero ang love language ni wife ay gifts. So si wife would give gifts. But the husband does not appreciate because his love language is service. Now the husband, since his loves, love language is service, he would keep serving the wife. But... The wife does not appreciate because he's not getting any gifts. So in love, in relationships, we have to find out what kind of love language that other person in the relationship would appreciate. And so in loving Jesus Christ, in loving God, we cannot take any guesses. We have to learn from Him Himself. Correct? Kasi kung ikaw, love language may gift, tapos di ka binibigyan ng gift, akala mo hindi ka mahal. Tama? But praise God because God has given us a guide. God has revealed Himself to us through Jesus Christ. Right? So we can know paano nga ba tayo makikitungo sa isang Diyos, Ama? Paano nga ba tayo makikitungo sa isang banal na Panginoon? Through Jesus Christ. Amen? 
So, mahaba po ang ating scripture for today. But, let's just imagine, this is a big life lesson. Amen? And I believe, marami po dito, pwede niyo pong palitan, pwede niyo pong explain to eh. Alright? Alam na alam po ninyo to. This is the parable of the sower. Alright? Gata ng ibang pangalan, the parable of a farmer scattering seeds. Para lang hindi masyadong familiar. Okay? Parable of the farmer scattering seeds. Okay? O, totoo yan. Nasa NLT yun. <laughs> hindi ko yun gawa-gawa. Okay? Sige, basahin po natin. Later, that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a uh, footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples came and asked him, Why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. So, makinig daw po tayo. Okay? That is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but, you, but they didn't hear it. Now, listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then, the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded, crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Okay, praise God for His Word. 
Ano pa lang yun? Scripture reading pa lang yun. Marami na tayong natutunan. <laughs> Pwede ba akong mag-raise of hands? Anong natutunan mo, brother? <laughs> Parang life lesson. <laughs> okay. Pero para sa ating service for today, we will um, try to chew it or we will try to cut it, slice it one by one. Okay? Para sa mga, especially sa mga hindi pa nakakaalam ng story na ito. And for those who have gone through this, maybe 20 times, I pray that God will give you fresh revelations. Amen? Amen? 20 times. <laughs> Correct? We know this parable. We know this parable. But how did we respond to it? Maybe at the time when you first read this parable, you were a good soil. But after a year, nagkaroon ng trabaho, toxic ang boss, naging thorny soil. O kaya naman, baka naman nagsimula ka as a rocky soil, emotion-based faith. But praise God because God has given you so much trials, and you have gone through them with God's help, you have now a fertile soil of heart. Amen. Sarap nun. Brothers and sisters, is your heart a footpath? Footpath ba yan? Yan ba ay yung, alam niyo po sa mga bukid, kapag kami lalakaran ka palagi, di ba? Mayroong part doon na nawawala na ng grass, tapos tumitigas na siya. Yun yung footpath. Wala pa yung semento nung siguro nung time na yun sa area na yun, pero matigas na talaga yung soil. Matigas na ang soil. And there was a custom back then na hindi muna nila inaararo bago sila maghagis ng seeds. Maghagis muna sila ng buto, tsaka sila mag-aararo. Okay? So if your heart is a footpath, eto ang description nun. You have heard about Jesus, but you think... You have not wronged anyone. Mabuti akong tao, wala akong inaapakang ibang tao, wala akong naaalalang masamang kasalanan, di naman ako nakapatay. Minsan, white lie. Yun. But I know Jesus. Especially in the Philippines. We know Jesus. We like Christmas. Right? And because of that, we feel... There is no need for repentance. Anong ihihingi ko ng tawad? Kapag ka nagkakwentuhan sa life group, ito yung kasalanan ko, ikaw, wala akong ma-share eh. Wala akong ma-share na kasalanan. Si parang, okay naman, pinalaki naman akong tama ng magulang ko. Word of warning, brothers and sisters. All have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory. Amen. If you feel like you have been brought up well and wala kang kasalanan, even that 0.01% of sin in you cannot be in the presence of God. Because God is 100% holy and he, can, he cannot tolerate any type of sin. And because of that, we need His forgiveness. We need reconciliation with Him. Amen? Cute na icon. Is your heart a rocky soil? Rocky Balboa? <laughs> rocky? Ano ba yung problema kung rocky, di ba? Ito kasi, this is a shallow soil and may underlying rock. Sabihin, rocky na yung ilalim niya, nasa taas lang yung soil. Ginagawa natin yan minsan sa mga bahay natin eh. Nakasimento na, tas bubuhusan natin ng lupa. Tama? Parang ganun. The seeds will sprout quick, right? But if it gets scorching hot, because that plant doesn't have deep roots, it will quickly wilt. You come to church, and then, nag-iiyakan silang lahat. And sobrang na-touch ka sa mga songs. Umiiyak sila eh. Naiyak ka na din. Umiiyak yung worship leader, nakaka-touch. Alam niyo po yung kasi kapag may umiiyak, parang naiiyak ka na din. Tama? Parang sa k-drama, pag umiyak na yung bida, naiyak ka na din. So parang feeling mo, ha, ah, sarap ng pakiramdam. Nakaiyak ako sa worship service. Lord, ito na talaga to. Susundin na kita. 
But when you were faced with a decision to do what's right and or to do what's wrong but convenient for you, you cannot stand up for God to do what is right because your faith in Him was only through emotions. Wala pang foundation, walang deep roots. Sino po sa atin ang naririto sa ganitong status ngayon? You only love Jesus when your circumstances favor you. Kapag may blessing, kapag may sweldo, kapag healthy ang family. But when trials come, you fall away. You blame God for your problems. Bakit ako? Bakit ang nanay ko? Anong kasalanan namin, Lord? Is your heart a rocky soil? Now, is your heart like soil filled with thorns? You have received Jesus, but the message of repentance and salvation is quickly crowded by your business, your pursuit of success, romantic relationships, wealth, marami pang iba. When God tells us to dream big dreams, does He allow us to forget Him and pursue such dream? When God tells us to pursue this girl for a wife, does He tell us or does He tell the, the guys to leave God behind? When you pray for a job and God gives you the job, does God tells you, you can leave me behind? Masakit, diba? Parang panakipbutas lang si God. Kailangan lang natin siya kapag may hinihingi tayo. Pero kapag ka mahirap na ang sitwasyon, kapag ka meron na tayong big dreams to reach, Lord, para naman sa to eh. Lord, I will be excellent in my job because you are an excellent God. I will serve my master. Well, kasi utos mo yun eh. But, we have forsaken our time with God. We have forgotten how it feels to be at the feet of Jesus. Kalimutan na natin. God's prayer, God's heart, is that when He tells us His message, that we receive it in full. Because, dun tayo mabibless. Dun tayo ma-improve. God's, God's plan for us is for us to improve our character. Eh. Diba? It's not just financial blessings, good health. Kasama na yun. But His ultimate goal is that when He gives us messages, that we that our character will be sharpened. Yung magbabago po yung ugali natin, yung pananaw natin sa buhay, and be like His. Is your heart a fertile soil? Tanongin nyo nga po sa katabi nyo. Ano ba yan? Uh, anong Tagalog ng fertile? Uh, mataba ba yung... <laughs> mataba ba yung puso mo? <laughs> parang, parang pangit pakinggan. <laughs> parang fatty heart. <laughs> parang fatty heart. Uh, yung puso mo ba ay may pataba? <laughs> Sige nga, sino magaling dito magtagalog? Tulungan niyo ako. Uh, sige, sabi mo sa katabi mo, yung bang puso na yan, yung bang puso na yan ay parang sponge. Parang sabi ni Pastor Benjo. Parang sponge ba yan? Yeah. Pag naglagay ka ng, ano, ng munggo, mag-ano siya, di ba? Sa sponge. Okay, is your heart a fertile soil? Okay, pwede bang, tu- pwede bang taniman yan? <laughs> pwede bang taniman yung puso mo? <laughs> oh, hindi to romance. Okay. You heard and truly understood God's free gift of salvation. Pag naintindihan po natin that God's salvation is free, hindi mo kailangan pagtrabahuhan, kailangan mo lang maniwala, totoong paniniwala, na may kasamang repentance. Amen? Kung kaya mong gawin yun, 
And that repentance leads to a new life. God renews your spirit. Diba? That's an indication that you have a heart that is like a fertile soil. Ang ganda ng status na ito eh, very humble. Heart that is humble and meek. Heart that is not boasting before God. A heart that acknowledges that we are saved by faith. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Not of works that no one can boast. Pag po doon ang heart natin, automatic yun eh, yung good works lalabas sa inyo because of the Holy Spirit's empowering. Doon na yun, nag na yung bearing fruit. Holy Spirit will empower you to bear fruit 30 times, 60 times, 100 times. And more and more, you become like Christ. Na, ranasan nyo na po ba na parang meron po kayong kaibigan before and they knew you as a different man or woman and when they finally saw you again, parang hindi ka na nila kilala. Gusto ko yung testimony ni Kuya Dudes kanina. Di ba, sabi niya nga, Ibang-iba siya three years ago. And the only difference from then and now was him. Amen? Quote ko lang yun sa The Chosen. <laughs> Note kayo ng The Chosen. <laughs> I was one way, but now I'm this way. And the, diff- uh, the only thing in between is him. Okay? You have a fertile soil of heart if you live your life loving God and loving your neighbors. Yan ang ultimate goal. Amen? And, hindi naman sinasabi ni Lord na kumain ka ng low costs, maging ano ka, homeless, mag-preach ka sa streets. It differs. It differs with each one of us. Iba-iba ang grace, na, yung measure of grace na binibigay sa atin. Iba-iba ang spiritual gifts natin. You could be this person in the corporate world. You can be this person in retail. You could be this person in the house. All the same. Living a life, loving God, and loving your neighbors. Fertile soil of a heart. Yan po yung goal natin. Jesus, kitang-kita naman doon no, sa parable of the sword that Jesus is more concerned about your being and not your doing. Hindi po tayo human doing. We are human beings. Yung asawa ko makaka-relate yan sa doings. Kasi <laughs> sasayaw may doings. <laughs> Pero human beings tayo. It's always the heart that matters. Because if your heart is pure, what comes out is pure. Amen? If we make mistakes, God looks at the heart. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Kung importante kay Lord ang being mo, and your being is, uh, stems from your heart. Kasi di ba po, uh, the heart is the wellspring of life. Your heart directs your life. What is in your heart directs your life. If my heart is, uh, has passion for something, for an advocacy, dun papunta ang buhay ko. If my heart is filled with passion for the lost, for God, dun papunta ang buhay ko. So brothers and sisters, let us guard our hearts. Because this is what matters to Jesus. Ngayon, ang tanong, if the goal is fertile soil and you have a hard, hardened heart or you have a thorny heart or you have a shallow heart, ano ang gagawin? Okay? How will God make a hardened soil, a rocky soil, and a soil filled with thorns fertile? Ito ang sagot, masakit pakinggan. Masakit malaman, but this is the truth. God shall break us so that, that He can build us up. God can break schools of thought. God can break religion. God can break your pride. Amen? God can even break your wealth just for you 
to see Him and be reconciled to Him. Amen? Ang cute ng icon. <laughs> Papakita ko lang kasi cute na cute, di ba? Broken tapos na heal. Okay? The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. The question now is this. Ano ba yung mga crops na yon? Ano ba yung mga fruit na yon na na-yield ng, ri- ng rich soil? Diba? Kasi hindi man tayo farmers, hindi atin masyadong maintindihan. But, what is Jesus um, referring to when He said, Kapag fertile ang soil mo, magbe-bear ka ng fruit 30, 60, 100 times. Excited ka na ba? Excited na ba? Amen. Ang crops na yon, fruit of the Spirit in increasing measure. Increasing measure. Fruit of the Spirit. Kapag po tayo ay naniwala kay Jesus, tayo po ay nagrepent and we declared Him as Lord of our life, Savior of our life. We become a new spirit. Uh, our spirit, our spirits are born again. Amen. When that happens, the Holy Spirit is given to us to empower us, to guide us, to help us. And this spirit, by His works, will create in us these fruits. Sino po dito ang makakapag-recite kasabay ko ng fruit of the Holy Spirit? Fruit of the Holy Spirit, isang buo lang yan. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sino po dito aminado walang self-control? <laughs> Minsan. Sino po dito aminado, medyo barumbado? <laughs> Sino po dito yung aminado na di makapaghintay kapag mahaba ang pila? Ayan. Sino po dito yung hindi matiis yung katrabaho, ang bagal-bagal? Sino po dito yung di mo kayang mahalin kasi inaway ka? Diba? Ang hirap naman din talaga eh. No? Mahirap talaga magkaroon ng love. Mahirap magmahal. Lalo na kapag di mabait sa'yo. Mahirap magmahal kapag niloko ka. ba? Mahirap maging masaya kapag nawalan ka ng mahal sa buhay. ba? Mahirap magkaroon ng peace kapag alam mong wala ka ng makakain mamaya. Wala, wala ka ng mapapakain sa pamilya mo mamaya. Mahirap maging kind kapag lahat ng tao all for himself. Mahirap maging good kapag puro bad ang nare-receive mo. Mahirap maging faithful kapag maraming maganda. <laughs> ano? Ano? Tama? Mahirap maging gentle kapag sa bahay nyo puro kayo sigawan. Lumaki ka, puro sigawan. Yung nanay mo, mura ng mura. ba? Sanay ka ni. Mahirap mag-self-control. Alam mo na yon. Mahirap mag-self-control. Tama? But, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation, the old has gone, and the new has come. Amen. And you have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> kaya, kahit unti-unti, kaya. Dadating ang panahon, hundred times, one thousand times na yung love mo, yung joy mo, yung peace mo, yung patience mo. Kindness mo, goodness mo, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And it will be perfected when we get there, face-to-face with Jesus. Amen? Excited na ba kayo? Yan. Practice na natin dito. Practice na natin patabain ang ating puso. Nang pataba. <laughs> Hindi nang taba. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> diba? Mabilis lang naman, hindi masyadong structured. Pero sana, dahil expectant ang hearts nyo, I believe, you were able to hear from God. Amen? As closing, balik tayo sa tanong, balik tayo sa title. Jesus, paano ba kita mamahalin? And anong relation nun sa parable of the sober? To love Jesus is to respond to His love. Kapatid, 
Sana, totoong maranasan mo ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Sana, yun ang prayer ko, and I'm sure prayer din to ng marami for many people, that you experience God's love at its raw, for, rawest form. Sana, ma- malaman mo na sa mga panahon na nag-iisa ka, umiiyak sa, sa kwarto mo, katabi mo siya. Umiiyak kasama mo. Sana, malanasan mo na nalulungkot din siya kapag ka nagugutom yung pamilya mo. And he wants to give you ways to bless your family. Sana, ma- maranasan mo that God has faith in you. That you can follow Him. Lagi ko po itong sinasabi, tawin nagpipreach ako. God has faith in us that we can also be like Him. Gano man kasama ang tingin mo sa sarili mo. Amen? Love Jesus. To love Jesus is to respond to His love. Repent. Receive His forgiveness. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Love Him back. Reciprocate mo yung love niya by obeying His commands. Kasi yun ang love language niya. Amen? Challenge for us today is to check our hearts. What are we willing to give up for Jesus? Dream ba yan to go abroad? Comfort zone mo ba yan? Will we allow Him to break our hardened hearts? Yung mga hearts natin na self-centered. Yung mga hearts natin na gospel-hardened. Kabisado ko na yung Bible. Ilang beses ko nang narinig yan. Will you allow God to give you a fresh revelation? Yung unbelieving hearts natin. Yung independent, self-sufficient hearts natin. Pwede mo bang isurrender yan kay God? Okay lang ba sa'yo na maging mahina sa harap ng Panginoon para palakasin ka niya? Allow Him to break our hearts. Will we allow Him to clean away the rocks that hinder our roots to grow? Galing po to kay Papi. Religio- religiosity. Yung mga traditions po natin that we feel will suffice to please God. We pray this much prayers. We offer these things. We go to church several times. But don't have a personal relationship with God. Do we hang on to man-made traditions? Do we hang on to go to praying to dead people? Are we lazy to open our Bibles? Are we lazy to hear from the Lord through sermons? Is it so boring? Hindi natin kayang tiisin. Sabi ng mga bata, Daddy, I'm so bored. Ganun din ba tayo? Feeling mo ba malapit ka lang kay God kapag naiyak ka? Kapag wala ka nang nararamdaman, feeling mo malayo na siya. Be steadfast, brothers and sisters. There will be times walang pakiramdam. But keep serving the Lord. Keep praying to the Lord. Keep reading your Bible. Keep asking the Lord to make His presence felt because He will answer. He is faithful. Amen? I hope we allow Him to do that. Okay? Will we allow Him to cultivate, clean, and pull out those thorns in our hearts? Masakit yun because when, di ba ang sabi nga, when God uproots you, masakit yun, di ba? So when God uproots something, when God uproots thorns from your life, masakit yun because it will be unfamiliar. Business of life. Will you be able to Stand up for that free time 
Marami tumatawag sa iyo, but no. Worship service namin. Chasing of things we do not have. Talagang di ka papaya. Gusto mo ikaw yung nasa taas. Kailangan ikaw yung mas maraming recruit. Kailangan ikaw yung mas maraming kita. Romantic relationships. Brothers and sisters, di ko naman sinasabi na hiwalayan mo basta-basta. But think, if your relationship is keeping you from God, naranasan ko na po yun eh, na ayaw ko pong bitawan. Ayaw ko pong bitawan, wala na akong ekstrang kamay. Yun si God oh, gusto ko siyang hawakan, pero wala na akong ekstrang kamay. Kailangan kong bitawan. Ginawa ni Lord, siya ang nagtanggal. Masakit. But through that heartbreak, I was able to get hold of God again and get back on track. And that was a, a breakthrough for me. So I hope if you are in that position, romantic relationships, ask the Lord for strength. Ask the Lord for people to counsel you. Ma, you will go, you will um, go through that successfully then. Amen? Wealth, popularity, and image. Okay? Daming challenge. By the way, ano kasi ngayon, yung uh, preaching namin ngayong uh, series, marami talagang gustong ibigay si Papi na messages. And la- sa lahat ng yan, amen and amen. Kasi totoong-totoo, yung mga points na to, yung mga challenges na to, it's true because it's happening. Amen? Brothers and sisters, will you persevere when God prunes you so that you, your yield will multiply even more? Bakit ko po ito nasabi? Because when you have a fertile soil and you have a growing plant, sometimes God has to cut stems and branches so that you will bloom further. But pruning is hard. Pruning is painful. But if you persevere, when God prunes you, you will yield even more fruit. Amen? So, like ko po sinasabi, kapit lang, kapatid. Kapit lang. Memory verse natin for today. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin. Seek the Lord while you can find Him. Call on Him now while He is near. So, habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Call on the Lord. Diba? Seek the Lord while you can find Him. Sabi nga nila, una-unahan lang yan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise be to God.